And Dana has this just to showcase our e-axle solution and let people be able to drive it and experience it. It's a single speed e-axle solution. I'm not sure about Zenith, but I can speak for Dana, and mm -hmm. Dana is looking at multi-speed solutions because yes, there are applications that need high speed plus the high gradeability, so they need that you know, higher gear ratio to start on some of these hills like we'll see here in a bit, uh, but still be able to hit you know, 100, 120 kph on the highway at a full load. So it pretty much necessitates a multi-speed type solution, be it two speed or three speed. So 100, 120 kph would be uh, closer to like 71 miles an hour. Highway speed. Some of our systems, instead of uh, you, you can mount or for like a rigid axle, the motor can be mounted in a perpendicular or north south configuration. That's going to use a uh, high point bevel gearing, or you can run it in an east west configuration or like a parallel offset axis configuration, which will use helical gearing. Helical gearing is uh, more similar to or is what is used in transmission like a regular uh, pass car transmission that is more efficient. So you can increase your overall range by increasing your torque transfer efficiency um, by different gear sets and gear configurations in the gearbox that would be used in a given e-axle assembly. So there's ways to use the power more smartly and then just put more power on the vehicle to get more range. And there's uh, been a lot, a lot of interest from OEMs and fleets and, uh, and just individual owner operators. We had a lot of interest, you know, the last two days here at the show. People are eating up this electrification and uh, the ability to have a, a clean platform that they can deliver their goods on or deliver their people around with. Yeah, it's uh, pretty exciting. We have a full test lab where we do test all of our products. We have a specific uh, e-axle dynamometer for testing these and we have facilities built that we can test them basically inside a box that goes around the assembly so we can test it at max hot and min cold temperatures. We also do on-site vehicle testing. This particular van, uh, they've got a picture of it somewhere I can show you if you want, but uh, we're located in Northwest Ohio and we go up to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. There's a test track up there that we'll visit in the winter time. You know, this past winter, it was like minus 20 for a couple weeks up there. So, and the extreme temperatures have an impact on battery life, obviously. The, the, whole, the hotter or colder a battery pack is mm -hmm. has an impact on its uh, energy transfer. Uh, Dana does have a power technologies group that supplies a lot of components that can be used for both heating and cooling of battery packs to optimize their efficiency. Uh, we're going to kind of work with the OEMs and let them you know, decide how they want to power things. We've got technologies to do whatever they want to do. We've got mm -hmm. the high voltage motors with TM4, mm -hmm. low voltage motors with SME group. Uh, they can supply a lot of the auxiliaries and some of those components. But as far as what the OEM wants to do, that's the OEM's choice. I mean, we're here to support them and, and help them meet their goals. 60 to 90 miles with the given with the current battery pack that's in here. It's a 62 kilowatt hour battery pack is what Zenith has in here. So could that conceivably be increased? Possibly, yeah. Again, that's uh, Dana's more focused on the e-axle solutions and how to actually use that power versus making mm -hmm. sure that power is there. My colleague Jason Sitters has been doing the ride and drives with us at the van, but on the Peterbilt 220, the comment that I've heard overwhelmingly is that this is the best truck that they've driven at the show. So, uh, you know, the ease of driving, how quiet it is, the torque, the responsiveness of the vehicle has been the best. We've gotten a lot of customer interest. I think we've gotten, a, candidly, uh, a couple that probably lead to orders on the vehicle. They really like the vehicle. They like the performance of the motor and the motor. They like the range that it has. And uh, so we expect a lot of good things. So when we're taking the diesel out of the solution, you're not gonna have to do the oil changes, you're not gonna have the diesel particulate filter. So all of that maintenance associated with the diesel is in go So just that alone is a significant benefit. Um, with the regenerative braking from electric uh, propulsion solutions, you're able to take the typical uh, brake replacement cycle and extend that significantly. Like we had just spoke about, we're talking about transit bus customers going from three month replacement cycles on brakes all the way to three years. So we're seeing you know 60 to 70% maintenance reduction with these vehicles. Our motor and inverter solution really kind of, it's, it's maintenance free in essence. Um, you know, maybe check cables periodically, make sure they're tight, but it's really a maintenance free solution compared to what's in the vehicle today. As you would expect with any new technology, there's going to be a learning curve. You know, Dana's invested in, we saw at the show with Jesse Combs, a series of training videos. So we want to help uh, fleets adopt this technology, do it responsibly, do it safely, and do it correctly with the new maintenance procedures. That will be fewer, but uh, do it properly. The subject of battery technology is an expansive subject and there's a lot of activity going on with batteries. What we're seeing kind of in the near term is that 
you're going from LFP batteries to NMC battery chemistries in, in, uh, from a lithium-ion perspective, that's what we have in the, in the Peterbilt 220. And, uh, you know, it's expected that a customer is going to get kind of a 10-year pack life out of an NMC battery um, with the available uh, charge cycles and, you know, the, the typical degradation over that life cycle. You're going to have, you know, 90% of the original battery capacity still left at that 10-year at that, uh, mark. Mm-hmm.